Hello and welcome to the Cyverse Learning Institute's Focus Forum webinar. I'm Tina Lee, Cyverse's User Engagement Officer. Today we are honored to host the webinar presentation on Genome Assembly Using Nano DJ Notebooks by Tamara Hernandez Beftin, a doctoral student at Hospital Nuestra Señora de Candelaria in Spain and a co-creator of Nano DJ. For those unfamiliar with Cyverse, we are an NSF-funded cyber infrastructure project, and this free webinar series is designed to fulfill part of our mission to train scientists like you on how to use Cyverse's computational resources. Um, we'll quickly take care of some housekeeping and then we'll start the webinar. Today's presentation is roughly 30 minutes with time for question and answers at the end. Please open the Zoom chat window and type any questions there for Tamara. I'll read those at the end of her presentation. Materials from today's webinar, such as her slides and the video recording of this webinar will be posted on a wiki page for which we'll email you the link uh, either later today or sometime during the weekend. So be on the lookout for that. The Cybers Learning Institute will be offering our second foundational open science skills camp and our third container camp. Both are scheduled for spring 2020, so please visit our website for more information and to register for these training events. Also, please join us in two weeks for a presentation by the other co-creator of NanoDJ, Hector Rodriguez Perez, um, who will present on metagenomic analysis using NanoDJ notebooks in cybers. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Tamara. She is a biologist who not only learned to code to create a new tool for the genomics community, but is giving this webinar in English, which is not her native tongue. Hi, Tam. Hi, thank you, Tina, for the introduction. Hello, all attendants. I am Tamara. I am a biologist. I did a biomedicine master. And now I am working on my PhD in genomics. And today I am really excited to start with one of the application of nanopore sequencing, genome assembly using nanodj notebooks in cybers. Before starting, I just want to tell you that for this webinar, you need to have a little experience in command line interface. So let's get started. Today's focus forum will be divided in different topics. First, we will explain the main step of next generation sequencing. Then, we will introduce you of nanopore technology sequencing. Then, we will also explain the assembly process and remind you what is NanoDJ. And finally, we will do a bacterial genome assembly demo with NanoDJ. Of note, due to time constraint and the complexity of the assembly process, we will not perform assembly of a complete genome in real time. So let's start with a brief introduction of the main step of next generation sequencing, to obtain a genome from the DNA fragmentation process to the final consensus sequence. As you can see, after fragmenting the DNA by different methods, chemical or physical, these fragments are sequenced, generating a small nucleotide sequence. Then, this sequence be assembled, which is a complex task that consists in the reconstruction of the genome. In this case, the assembly process is uh, will order as a the sequence, we will order as a puzzle mode, forming an alignment of multiple reads called contexts. Then, these all contexts are joining together to generate the final consensus sequence. The final assembly can be carried out with, uh, with the with a reference genome called Red Sequence Alignment that is very useful in the clinical sequencing context in humans or with the NOVA assembly where that is useful when the, the reference genome is not available or in application where the reference genome is of little use due to the plasticity of the organism such as the case of bacteria. Here I want to introduce you nanopore sequencing. In this technology, the sequencing occurs through the passage of the DNA strand into nanopores. This passage produces a change in the electrical potential that is associated to a specific nucleotide in the sequence. The most important device of this technology is called Minion, that is a small and portable device that can be used out of, out of the lab, as you can see it in the slide. But the most important thing of this, of this technology is its ability to generate long reads that allow to cover uh, the repetitive region of the complex genome, such as the human or yeast. 
and uh, this facilitates the reconstruction of this type of genome. Moving on to more informatic analysis, this technology generates a fast file format, which contains the raw signal, signal of the sequencing. Then this format will be transformed in more readable file called FASTQ file, which is presented as follows. In the first line, there is the name of the sequence. The second line contains the DNA sequence. In the third line, there is a blue symbol, which represents the final of the DNA sequence. And the fourth line contains the quality assigned to each nucleotide. <clears throat> For this, uh, there is also another format called FASTA, which is similar to the FASTQ file without the, info the quality information. Either of these two formats can be used in the assembly process, whereas the FASTQ file is recommended for a greater precision in the reconstruction of the genome. Once you have the sequence, you will assemble. And for this, you, there is different assembler available. Uh, this assembler is ba are based on the um, different complex algorithm and reconstruction mode to generate the final consensus sequence. And it requires higher uh, computational performance. For example, if you want to assemble short reads, you can use Velvet or a Space Assembler. In the case of long reads, you can use Canu, Fly, or Miniam SAM, among other assemblers. And you can also do, uh, you can also do a, a hybrid assembly when short reads and long reads are combined using Unicycler or Mazurka. The most commonly um, assembly method uh, are based on overlap consensus method and the Virgin graph. In the overlap consensus, consensus method, the sequence will be is a grouped by similarity until the final consensus sequence is generated. Whereas in the Virgin graph, represent the overlap between the sequence using commas, which represent the all possible subsequence on length k obtaining of a read through the obtaining through the, uh, the DNA sequencing. The main advantage of this type of graph is the, that the overlap are simpler and are reconstruction are reconstructed with, with precision. So you can get uh, information with a lower computational cost, speeding up the analysis process. Just to remind you, NanoDJ is a Jupyter notebook integration of tools built in Docker to simplify manipulation and assembly uh, of DNA sequence generating by Open nanopore technology. Docker is an isolated environment that contains all the everything you need to handle the data with NanoDJ, and it also uh, facilitates the installation of dependencies and improves the reproducibility of the results. We have developed NanoDJ because there was no a software solution, no a specific software solution aiming to uh, facilitate of nanopore technology sequence analysis by integrating capabilities for data manipulation, sequence comparison, and assembly in the, in the field of experiments or with educational purposes to help in learning about genomics. This is the next flow of NanoDJ. We can start with a fast file and do the base call with AlbaCore. Nowadays, the base calling is carried out with other software called Guppy while the sequencing is occurring. So, uh, sequencing is occurring. So you can start also with a FASTQ file. Uh, you can also can start with uh, uh, simulated reads and using NanoSim and a reference genome. Then uh, there are also all the multiplexing step and quality control step using BioPython. And you can also do an assembly with the two methods mentioned at the beginning. Of, the, of this webinar, the sequence alignment of the node assembly. For this demo, in this webinar, we will start with a FASTQ file, which is, a, which is available in NanoDJ, uh, which contains a subset of uh, a bacteria genoma, a bacteria genoma, genoma called Streptococcus agalactiae. Then we will go to the quality control step using BioPython and using the quality control notebook. Then we will go to the no assembly uh, notebook with the no, with the Canu and Fly assembler. Then we will use Quas and use the assembly compare notebook to compare the assembly results. And we will visualize the assembly graph using Bandage 
and assembly graph notebook of NanoDJ. So let's start with the assembly demo, genome assembly demo. We will go to the Cybers web, web. And before I start, uh, have you following the um, Upendra's webinar, which explain how to load all the data, notebook, and software from NanoDA. We will start with the, um, with the quality control notebook of NanoDA. Of note, if you want to use your own data, you want to drive with your own data, you can upload in this part of the of the cybers. In this case, I don't know. So a quality control step of your reads is highly recommended. For this, NanoDJ rely in a Python programming language and the BioPython model to evaluate the quality of the of the base code, the read length, the GCC content, and the quality of your reads. Using this programming language and this model allows a greater control when filtering or visualizing the data. In this part, we need to, to import all the li libraries and all the package necessary to manage the data and the FASTQ file. In this part, uh, with this command, we are going to build a data frame with the ID, this sequence, read and length, GC content, and quality information. And in this part, you can provide your FASTQ input file. Then, in here, we can describe, we can obtain a basic statistic metrics of these parameters of the real length, GC content, and quality. And you can see the number of reads, the meaning, the mean, minimum, or maximum, and more other basic statistics. And this is useful, and you can get an idea how was the sequencing run. You can also visualize these parameters, and for this, you need to import another type of library, and then you can plot the different parameters. In this case, we are representing the, the real length distribution. In this case, the GC content distribution of our reads. And here, the quality distribution. <clears throat> you can also uh, represent an analyzing range. And for example, in this case, we are building uh, two ranges, uh, two GC content ranges. And here we can see, we describe, the, for example, the first range. And then we can also represent the different quality distribution between the two GC content ranges in this case, and the different real length distribution of the two ranges. And this is very useful when you want to make a filter of your data. Once the quality control step has been done, we will go to another assembly, well, one Deno assembly notebook with Kano and its polish. In this notebook, Kano gets a graph genome assembly and nano polish improves the consensus sequence. Kano is a popular assembler modified from Seller Assembler, which is based on the overlap consensus method. Um, it can assemble complete microbial genome and almost complete eukaryotic chromosomes. Kano has three stages, correction, trimming, and assembly. In this part, with this command, we can get the draft assembly of, uh, with Kano. And in this part, you can provide your, <clears throat> your FASTQ input file, and then you can add more information if you want to. For example, the genome site, if you know it, the minimum real length uh, to use in the assembly process, and the memory and threads, among others. On the other hand, NanoPolish improves the final consensus uh, <clears throat> sequence generated uh, uh, from Kano Assembler. For this, it's used a co uh, consensus variant mode. <clears throat> Sorry. And before starting, we, before using NanoPolish, first we have to use uh, other software called BWA to, to do an alignment of the results of Kano. So in this part, first we index with BWA the <clears throat> the faster the, fi the faster file generated from Kano, which contain the context, and in this part we we do the alignment of this uh, of these reads of this context and these reads, and we can use our software called some tools to short these reads to short this uh, sequence. And this is the 
the output of this. And then here, uh, Nanopolis get the fast file and the read of the fast queue file. And then with this command, and using the consensus mode, uh, Nanopolis uh, pro improve the final consensus sequence. Likewise, we will go to another Denovo assembly notebook with Fly. Fly is a uh, Denovo assembler for long and noise reads. And it's faster, it's based on the bridging graph and it's faster than other assemblers. And it can generate contiguous and precise assembly with any type of genome, even with large genome. In this case, it shows the basic argument to use with this uh, assembler. And in this part, this is the command to execute the, the assembly process with fly. And we can see the, the output. And at the end, we can see a little summary of the results. It shows the total length of the assembly and the number of contexts and the directory where you can find the assembly results file. Now we are moving on to another uh, notebook, uh, to the comparison assembly notebook, where, where we can find QAS software. And QAS evaluates and compares the genome assembly and provides very important metrics and graph. The, this uh, facilitates interpretation of the results. QAS uh, can, in, can generate st basic statistics just, such as the well-known M50, that is the minimum content length to cover at least the 50% of the genome, and can introduce new statistics like the NA50, that is a N50 where the length of aligning blocks is counting instead of the content length. In this part, with this command, it shows how to use QAS and all the options to use it. And then in this part, we are taking the context or the assembly results from Kanu, and in this case for Fly, to compare the assembly results. And in this case, we are providing a reference genome of Streptococcus agalactiae. And we execute this command, and we get all the graph and all the metrics to compare. And this uh, generate a report file in, in, a, in a text file. Then with this other command, we can see the table. We can see all the metrics generated from QAST. And we can see, for example, the number of contacts, the total length of the assembly, the largest contact, the reference length, the GC content of the assembly, and the reference gen, uh, the reference GC content of the uh, reference, the N50, and in this case, the NA50 that we mentioned before, um, between the difference between Kanu and Fly Assembler. We can also uh, obtain, with this software, obtain a different plot. And one example of this plot is the cumulative length. And in this plot, it represents the number of contexts and the cumulative length. And in this case, we can see the result for Kano assembler, fly assembler, and the reference genome. You can also visualize the assembly graph using another software called, called Bandage. So to finish this demo, we will go to, to the assembly graph notebook where you can find Bandage. An ideal situation and ideal graph will contain a different path for each underlying sequence. But due to complexity of the assembly, such as the presence of repetition sequence, graph can contain bifurcations. Bandage can be solved, this uh, can, can help to solve manually this uh, complexity uh, if, if additional information is available. To use this software, we can uh, we need a GFI if GFI file, input file that is generated uh, by different assemblers. And when we execute this command, we will see something like this a screenshot uh, interface of one data that is, that is very intuitive to use. And in this case, we can see the assembly graph. In this case, with a lot of loops, loops due to the presence of a, a small context that make it difficult the, to build a single path that represents the final consensus sequence. 
So to finish this uh, webinar, you have to keep some things in mind. First, the assembly depends on different factors, such as the nature of the sequence organism and the run performance. This, the assembler mentioned in this webinar and use it can be applied to other types of genomes, such as the human one. But you have to keep in mind that the type of assembler or the choice of the best assembler depends on the objective of your study and the genome you want to assemble. The assembly of large genomes requires greater computational performance and long, longer execution time. Um, finally, we are testing new tools to incorporate NanoDA. So keep an eye on NanoDA GitHub page because we are updating it. I think Hector will explain more details about this in his webinar. And to finish, I would like to thank all the institutions that have allowed this uh, presentation to the organization for continuing on me for this webinar. Uh, thanks, all, of course, all the attendants for listening. Um, now I think I am, we are going on with questions. I will be very happy to answer them. Thank you for listening. Great. Tamara, thank you so much. OK, we do have a few questions. Um, first one, what is the benefit of using Kanu plus nanopolish for assembly since fly seems faster and more robust? Yeah, this is uh, a very uh, good question. It depends on the objective of your, of your study, because if you want to be, if you want to get a fast, uh, an assembly faster, it's better to use fly in this case. But maybe if you want to have a more accuracy, a precise assembly, it's better to use CAN in this case. But all depends on the organism that you are going to sequence, the sequencing run, um, in general, what you want to get of your study um, for this analysis. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, the next question, do you know the maximum genome size that can be assembled in the Cyverse discovery environment? Mm, no, that's a very good question. I'm not sure. I'm not completely sure. Sure. Um, actually, we might have uh, some Cyverse attendees who could answer in the chat too. I know um, Upendra's on and maybe Amanda's on too. So if you guys have those answers, uh, please feel free to ask or to put that in there. Another question, Tamara, is how can one integrate a new tool such as another assembler in NanoDJ? How? Well, um, we fir first we will um, try, we will compare the results with uh, our results with this uh, type of assemblers that are available in an ODA. Um, then we will see the dependencies and everything necessary to use it. And then we will do a docker to introduce, to to how do I say that? Um, yeah, to complete to you to join all the necessary dependencies uh, software to use another type of assembler and introduce in an ODA. But first, we will in our lab we will uh, test first uh, because you want, uh, if is it possible to be incorporated. Okay. Yep. Um, and maybe later on at the end, you can give us some hints about what kinds of new tools you're looking at in that line. Uh, one more question. Are all these tools and pipelines designed for small genomes? Are they not suitable for big genomes such as greater than two gigabytes or approximately two gigabytes? Mm, the assemblers or NanoDA. So I didn't understand. Um, let's see, can the person, Carla, who wrote the question, or maybe somebody else can pipe in, I think they mean, like, if you have genomes that are larger than, say, two gigabytes, um, can these same tools like Kanu and Nanopolish and um, Bandage and all the tools in your pipeline, are they, can they handle larger genomes? 
Yes, you can use it, but you have to test first if with your own data it works. Um, if you want to get, uh, you have to test first <laughs> the results mm -hmm. and compare. Because there are also another uh, type of assembler available. For example, if you are talking about uh, the human one, I think, uh, there the is also, for example, an assembler uh, called SASTA and can assemble this type of genome more efficiently. But there is also, you have to try another type of assembler and compare the results and what is the best of your data. Okay, yes, and Upendra um, had a response. Yes, these tools pipelines can be used on large genomes too, but the current limitation for large genomes is the memory available in the DE. Okay, so that's the limiting factor there. Um, and Carla clarified that her question is similar to Amanda's. So, all right. Are there any further questions for Tamara? I'll just give people a few uh, seconds. Um, otherwise, you know, this has been a great tool, I think, for so many people to start their careers in um, RNA sequence and genome assembly. So thank you so much, Tamara, for not only developing this tool and, and the documentation in GitHub, but then giving our, our, our webinar and thank you all for attending today. Hope uh, you will all join us in two weeks on September 27th for the next Focus Forum given by Hector Rodriguez Perez on metagenomic analysis using nano GJ notebooks in Cybers. Tam, did you have any last, uh, oops, wait, sorry, there's one more question. Oh, two more questions. When will the new version of nano DJ be available? Well, um, I don't have the answer of that <laughs> because we are working on the uh, on this. So I I hope soon. <laughs> you hope soon, right? We tend to forget that you know you have a first job as a PhD student and not just a a developer for Cypher's <laughs> tools. <laughs> And then there's one more question, the DE or comment, the DE can load the largest genome I could find, a specific pine, if I recall, but assembling is a whole different ball of wax. So that's where it seems like the, um, the DE limitations on memory has a different effects depending on what your task is. So, okay. Thank you so much, and you're getting thanks from some of our participants. So everyone, we'll see you hopefully in two weeks. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you so much.